the Podcasting Dead is available on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and SoundCloud. Make sure to subscribe for more podcasts. And while you're at it, drop us a like. If you want to help support the channel and have access to extra content, secret contest, and more, make sure to search for us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash The Podcasting Dead. It's time to get weird on a Wednesday. Welcome to Weird Wednesday. I'm Justin. I'm JP. And we are the Podcasting Dead. Uh, as that intro said, before we begin, if you're into podcasts or the paranormal or lots of other things, consider subscribing. We have all kinds of cool content. We talk about everything from The Walking Dead to the paranormal to conspiracies to what kind of beer we're going to be drinking this weekend. So if you're into podcasts, check us out. Uh, also, don't forget, you can find us on Patreon, patreon.com slash the podcasting dead. Anyways, JP, number one, how you doing this morning? I'm feeling full now. I got my biscuit, my tater witches. It was good. You're looking full. You look fulfilled. You're sitting back, relaxed, stomach hanging out like you're good to go. Yeah. I got to take my (laughs) antacid, though, when when we finish with this. So on today's Weird Wednesday, we're going to discuss something that I'm excited to discuss because JP knows little to nothing about it. So I'm very interested to get his perspective and see what he makes of all of this. And, of course, we are talking about black-eyed children. Mm-hmm. And a funny little story, uh, one of our good pals who's been on the podcast many times, Matt Crowder, I was at a brewery and there was a lot of music and talking going on so you could barely hear. And he was talking about uh, what we were asking what we were going to podcast about this week and talking about coming back to the podcast with us. And he said, what are you talking about this Wednesday? And I said, black eyed children. He said, black guide children. I said, no, black eyes, like eyeballs. He was like, oh, I was going to say, I don't, that that doesn't sound good. I don't think I want to be a part of that. I was like, no, (laughs) black eyed children. So without further ado, just by saying black eyed children, JP, what is, what do you, what do you think? Um, what have you heard? I I don't know anything about them. I just think of the little kid from the, uh, the X-Files movie where like the, the black goo like started like, uh, you know, filling his eyeballs and I don't, I don't know nothing about them. All right. So actually let's just go back to the beginning. Okay. While it's reported that throughout history, supposedly there they've been reported. But what we do know is a lot of people give credit to the first ever uh, reporting uh, being done. I think in 1996 by uh, a Texas reporter, Brian Bethel on a ghost related mailing list where he said that, um, he had these encounters. I think he said he was coming out of a movie um, and that these two kids walk up and they basically were asking him uh, for a ride or for money. And, uh, you know, he reported having this very strange feeling, like almost a yearning to be- because basically he's in his car and they're asking to be let in. And that's kind of a recurring theme with the black eyed children is they are always asking to be let in. Like you have mm-hmm. to give them permission and they'll use excuses like with this. And, and I might be wrong on the specifics here because it's been probably a decade since I remember reading this. Brian, I think, reported um, that they had said, you know, they needed a ride home from the movies. And then they said that they needed to call their mom. And then they and he said he felt this weird yearning, like he felt his hand moving to his door without even consciously making the decision to do it. It's almost like they were tapping into some kind of subconscious uh, part of him and, and controlling his actions. And he said that the thing that blew his mind was that it took a while, which I feel like this is something you would notice out the gate, but a lot of reportings, it isn't until after a, you know, a little bit into the interaction that people realize these kids eyes are all black, all black. Uh, and that's what Brian said that, you know, he, he had this weird feeling and then all of a sudden he realized, holy shit, their eyes are all black. And uh, you know, that of course freaked him out. And there's actually a really stupid comic by Aftershock Comics that I was reading a couple of years ago called Black Eyed Children, mm-hmm. an attempt to make them something. It was really stupid. Um, just so if you find yourself interested in Black Eyed Children and like JP, you've never heard of them and you see that comic, don't go get it thinking it's going to be good because it's not. Um, but so these reports are wide and they're not rare. Lots of people report. And some of the scariest ones, they'll come to your door in the middle of the night and they'll say things like, I need to use your phone. And then, and it's also reported that as you deny them access, they start to get a little irritated. And there's usually always two. In a lot of cases, one of the most common factors is that there is an older one and a younger one. Mm-hmm. But they want to get into your house or into your car, whatever. And it's like they can't come in unless you invite them. 
And you know what else can't come in unless you invite them, Ooh. supposedly? Vampires. Right. Yeah. So that leads to some speculation. And there have been stories of them being aliens trying to pretend to be human. Um, but lots. So what do, what do you think? I mean, just so far into this, what is, where, where is your head at? I, uh, they, they, they sound more like a... Like some crackheads that would be up in my neighborhood more than anything. Just, you know, the hey, crackheads uh, in your neighborhood. Yeah, let me in, man. Need, need have. Use phone, need to use, can I use your bathroom? Need to use the bathroom? Come on, man. Need to use the bathroom. They have all black eyes, though? They don't, no, they usually have like lazy bloodshot eyes. So I guess it's a, a different phenomenon. Right. Um, but yeah, and it, it's it always, a lot of times, too, it's, um, you know, it, I, like I've seen reports of it happening. At a, I remember reading one story about a guy who was at work and he. Uh, looked at his security camera, like he's in the building. I think he had just came in from smoking a cigarette or something, mm-hmm. and he sits down and he notices on the monitor that there's like a, a, a black-eyed child. At the, well, first he doesn't know it's black-eyed child. It's just a child at like the fence, and he's like, the hell, you can't be here. And he kind of turns around, he's doing something, and he turns back around like the, it's two of them, and they're both staring straight into the camera, and he notices that their eyes are all black. Jesus. And... um you know, and again, they same thing. We need to come in. Can we use the phone? We're lost. We're hungry. That's another one. We're hungry. You'll hear that a lot. Um, so what do you do? I mean, what do you do with these these children? What like what? Are supposedly there no one has let them inside. No one's let them in and been around to uh, tell about it. So what they they will find like murder victims, and they're they're sometimes they blame it on black eyed children well i don't know but the thing is it's like i watch like one of my favorite channels and if you haven't checked him out you should i promote him a lot lazy masquerade i absolutely just love his narrations dude's got the most soothing voice but um <laughs> it's soothing even though he's talking about horrific stuff like murders and demons and ghosts and yeah whatever but um but yeah no it's uh you know he reports all the time about unsolved like un- missing people's cases i mean you gotta think how many people go missing because while it's like you know, oh, they that that's not true because, I mean, you know, we would hear about it. I mean, you you, you hear all the time about missing people who are never found. And yes, I try to be a realist, so we know that probably ninety five percent of the time it's they've been murdered and, and and buried where we they can't be found or they don't want to be found. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people just disappear. But there are nonetheless lots. So you can't rule it out because there are lots of missing people cases. There's so many missing people. So you think that the the dead-eyed children more or less are kind of like pulling these, uh, cannibalizing, pulling them into a an extra-dimensional space? I mean, that is one interesting thing is that they are um, from another dimension. Yeah, ex- extra-interdimensional d- beings, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there seems to be a lot of those kind of lurking around. And I, these people that just seemingly vanish into thin air, I think that is... As a, a, a good a cause as any. You right. see what I mean? Um, the interesting thing is that they seem to only appear at night. That's when most encounters are, is that they uh, they appear at night. And actually, remember, Brian Bethel. Remember that name. You can actually go read his story um, Brian Bethel. online. Like I said, I think it happened in like 96, 97, somewhere in that range. Um but the thing is, they usually only appear, appear at night, and the age range is usually somewhere between 6 and 16. It's interesting to note that they don't ever look older than you know a 16-year-old most times because it's almost like they know that our guard goes down when we see children. Yeah. A very, a very smart play by these creatures, whatever they are. Yeah, and a lot of predators are nocturnal, so that would, that would make sense. That's too. interesting. Yeah, a lot of predators are nocturnal, and on top of that, vampires. Or nocturnal. I mean, keep in mind, I don't typically believe in vampires, but it is interesting, the parallels here. No, I think they've existed throughout history, whether they're extra-dimensional or not, you know. Do you believe in other things, like werewolves? I I, I think there's some precedent for them, yeah. Interesting. Do you believe in people that turn into werewolves, or perhaps like wolf-people hybrids that are just, you know, existing? I, it's that That's murky water, man. I, I do think that they're... There are occasions where your your genetic uh, genome can you know transmutate and make you do and look like all kinds of different stuff. That's true. But again, uh, until I see it myself, you know, I'm not going to put any money on it. 
So we're very similar in that way. We're both open-minded to these things, but we're also the kind of people, it's like, if I don't see it with my own eyes, I really don't know that I can believe it. Right, right. Um, so, uh, you know, and as I said, kind of giving another rundown of them. So what we've got so far is they usually only appear at night, usually between the age of 6 to 16 years. Uh, and they usually ask for a favor. Like that's how they try to get into your home or your vehicle. They'll ask for things like phone call or a ride home or to come in and get something to eat or even to use the bathroom to which I'd be like, look, kid, I mean, if you want to pee on my bushes, man, you go right ahead. What if it's a number two, though? Well, then go do that in the woods. My dog does number twos out in the yard. So you know what? Just go do it out in the woods. We'll be all right. How do you kill these creatures? That we don't know because no one's ever killed one and talked about it because, again, Per their disguise, most people aren't, most sane, normal people aren't comfortable with attacking children. Right. Um, but uh, it's interesting that, uh, you know, the few people who've had interactions with them, and I say few even though there's been a ton, but they express this feeling of like just, it's something primal almost that you pick up on that you don't realize that you're picking up on. It's this unexplainable fear when these kids are, or when you're in their presence. Um, and that's that's a very common, you know, uh, familiar. That's a common thing between these stories is they explain this wave of fear, which I imagine if you were looking at a being with all black eyes, the fear would be a natural reaction because our brains yeah. panic when they see something, you know, that's not normal or not supposed to be that way. But a lot of people describe this like it's all like I said, it's just this primal, excuse me, fear from within that overtakes you. Man, why don't they just prey on pedophiles? You know, number one, they'd have no trouble getting in the door. They might. Yeah, yeah. I mean, number two, they might. It'd be, a, it'd be a, a great public service. You know, just prey on the pedophiles. It's they win, win for everybody. Yeah, they might, except for the pedophiles, they don't win. They might. We wouldn't know. People go missing all the time, and yeah. let's face it, most pedophiles aren't very public with their pedophilia. So no. some of these missing people could have been pedophiles that were. It almost makes me think of that um, Scarlett Johansson movie. What was it Under the Skin or something like that? It's on Netflix where she's like this that. alien thing that consumes men and lures them away. Yeah, I don't know if I saw that. Interesting fact, if you ever watched that movie, is that um, there's a scene where she's riding around in the van and talking to different men and getting them in the van. That's yeah. A lot of that's completely improv. Like those men are strangers. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a security crew in the back of the van that you don't know, they don't know about. But they're complete strangers. Like, that's all real, her picking up strangers off the street. Oh, wow. And then some of them go on to act further in the movie once they learn that they're in a movie. Ooh, man. But anyways, back to Black Eyed Children. So I'll tell you what. Let's see, Orion. I was saying you could go look it up um, and get the full story yourself. But you know what? We got time. And while we're here, let's recount the first known documented case of Black Eyed Children. We're talking once again about Brian, Be- Brian Bethel. You ready? Yes. So, um and I'm getting this account. I'm reading this. I'm not taking credit for putting this reading together. I'm reading this off of rare.com or rare.us, actually. Rare.us is credited for writing this up. I am reading it to you, the listener. So here we go. Brian Bethel was one of the first people to document having met black eyed children in real life. Uh, he published a transcript of the events on his blog back in 1998. Now, this next part is uh, part of his story. All right. He says it was around 930 p.m. on January the 16th of 1998, and Brian uh, had left his apartment in uh, Texas for uh, the Dropbox to pay his internet bill. Imagine that, back in the day when you had to go like drop a check in the mail versus just going online and paying it now. But uh, on the way, he stopped at the Dollar Movie Theater next to his service provider's building to use the glow of the marquee as light to make uh, out his check. As he did this, there was a knock on the window of his vehicle. Uh, and uh, he saw two young boys. He said he would place them between 10 and 14 years old, and he described the boys as, quote, boy number one was slightly taller than his companion, wearing a pullover hooded shirt with a sort of gray checked uh, pattern and jeans. I couldn't see his shoes. His skin was olive colored, and he had curly, medium-length brown hair. Uh, He exuded an air of quiet confidence. Um, And boy number two had pale skin with a trace of freckles. His primary characteristics seemed to be looking around nervously. Uh, he was dressed in a similar manner to his companion, but his pullover was a light green color and his hair was sort of a pale orange. They didn't appear to be related, hmm. at least directly. Um, and so almost immediately, Brian knew something was up and felt this sense of fear. The first boy uh, 
started to tell him that uh, they needed his help. They wanted to uh, see the new Mortal Kombat movie, which he probably did them a favor by not giving them money to see it (laughs) if he didn't, Uh, which I'm just playing. The first one wasn't terrible. The second one was god awful. Um, But they forgot their money. So they're like, hey, we really want to see this movie. We left our money at home. Can you help us out? So instead of asking for the money itself, though, the boy asked for a lift to their house. Hmm. So he didn't actually ask for money. What the boy said was, hey, you know, we need money for this movie. Can you give us a ride to our house so we can get it? Um, and the guy said he was nervous and hesitant uh, as the first boy continued to try to coax him by saying things like, come on, mister, we just want to go to our house and we're just two little boys. Come on, mister, let us in. We can't get in your car and you know, we can't get in your car until you do, you know, just let us in and we'll be gone before you know it. We'll go to our mother's house. So, uh, Brian found himself uh, unlocking the door without even realizing, like I was telling you earlier, like uh, as if, you know, the child's mind was just making it or something, you know, he just started unlocking it, but he kind of caught himself in the middle of unlocking. And, uh, you know, he looked back at the kids with a whole new perspective. And that's when he realized that the kids' eyes were solid black. Now we're talking no pupil, no iris, no white, nothing, solid black. Um, and all of the, the stories of people meeting these black eyes kids claim that once you realize the eyes are all black, things get dangerous. The second boy continued to stand there completely silent while the first boy threatened him, saying, we won't hurt you. You have to let us in. We don't have a gun. According to Bethel, the boy was implying that they didn't need a gun. He started pulling at the door and demanded to be let in with the courage that he found Bethel, uh, you know, threw his car in reverse and took the hell off. And was like, I'm not, uh, I'm not dealing with this. So then you fast forward to November the 14th of 98, and uh, Brian actually posted an update on his ghost hunting blog or email list. And he apparently didn't talk too much uh, uh, about the black eyed kids after the first post. And they, you know, his audience was demanding it, but he just wasn't really talking about it. But it's interesting because John Northwood was one of John's online friends. And this guy apparently was a pagan's right cor- pagan's rights coordinator for a group called Spirit, and Brian claimed that he had never told this friend about the whole black eyed kid encounter. Yet uh, there's an interaction that they that this guy apparently had. He had posted something online asking about uh, if people really believed in ghosts or kids with funny eyes, and then they had you know he had his own little experience. So. Um, which I mean could be easily, oh, he read that online and then decided he wanted to have some fun with it. But, uh, since this whole thing with Brian, there have been, uh, more and more encounters and they seem to grow every year. They reached an all time high in 2013 when they made the news, thanks to a weekly strange video submitted by MSN. The video uploaded, uh, was, it was giving an alleged look at him. It was, however, quickly discredited. Uh, which only increased the mystery and curiosity, you know, like this whole mystery surrounding it. Um, to date, there have been many claims, conversations, threads, and countless videos, and even a book uh, about the whole thing. But so that's one common uh, similarity they have, though, is the whole older child, younger child dynamic. You see that in a lot of cases. And sometimes I've read where it's two girls, sometimes yeah. it's two guys. I think in most cases they are the same sex. I'm not going to say I haven't read a story where there's like an older sister and a younger brother or an older brother, younger sister. But I think in most cases they are the same sex. It's either two girls or two boys. And there's one that is in that 14 to 16 age range. And then there's one that seems a bit younger. And they always say the younger one appears very nervous, almost like they don't want to be a part of this. And the older one has just this confidence and almost this like very in control way about them. Um, and, and I don't know. So when you have to compare the similarities, do you think that people are just telling similar stories so it'll be believed? Or do you think that there might actually be, are these the same two beings? Well, I mean, you know, the fact that, that the young, you know, the fact that you always have those similarities where the younger one's a little less confident and the older one's very confident and control. I mean, it, it either seems like these beings might be the same two creatures because you have you have sightings and encounters. I've read everywhere as far as like Ireland to the States to to over in Asia. So, I mean, these encounters yeah. happen all over the world. It's a uh, I'd have to see I'd have to examine a lot of cross reference, a lot of different encounters because 
the first red flag for me is this guy has like a, a ghost hunting blog or whatever. And so then just so happens to. He has this incredibly, it's a lot like the, with the ghost hunting videos we watch. I'll tell you, you know, I, I give a lot more credibility to the ones who are just random people than to people with actually ghost hunting YouTube channels. You right. Know? So I don't know, but if there's that many, if there are that many, you know, instances of this. Now I'm wondering though, something to it. cause this guy was a, a reporter. Um, I'm wondering if this was his paranormal site or not, though. You know what I mean? Like, I'm wondering. I, I don't know for sure if he ran the site or not, or maybe he just posted it to the site. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. I'm trying to find more on that. But I don't know. What do you think? Vampire? Transdimensional? Like, if these creatures are real, what do you think they are? Yeah, I mean, they could be possessing uh, uh, cadavers of children or real children and, you know, then going to... to parasite onto these other uh, unsuspecting people. I don't know, man. Um, I, some people think aliens trying to figure out how to be humans. Aliens? Some people think extraterrestrials. Absolutely. What? So what? They're just practicing social interaction? Maybe. What would they do when they got in the house, I wonder? Maybe experiment on you. Maybe abduct you. To me, even though I'm not going to say on record, I don't really believe in vampires. Um, and there's no really to it. I don't believe in vampires. But, um, you know, it, they, they, to me, they sound more like vampires than anything else. The whole needing to be invited in, um, you know, the, the whole trying to play. I mean, it definitely sounds like they are predators. It doesn't sound like they want to come into your house and uh, leave you, you know, leave you be. Because they definitely have picked um, the appearance of something you won't find threatening, so they, you'll drop your guard. And I mean, usually someone only needs you to drop your guard if they're going to do something bad to you. So, if I had to pick one supernatural thing that I would say I think they are, I would say vampires. Well, you know, it has been scientific, scientifically proven that psychic vampires exist. I mean, I, they're not necessarily immortal beings or any psychic vampires but yeah just people who uh, feed off of a uh, off of your emotion and stuff like this yeah I, I saw a special on it and some of them are malevolent and some of them though they they'll come and just kind of like absorb and you feel like kind of euphoric and stuff that, that'd that be a good uh, topic one wednesday is the psychic vampire phenomenon yeah i'd love to learn a little bit more about that i've heard nothing about this and you say this is backed by real science yeah yeah they've actually like put the uh, the electrodes on them to monitor brain waves and all this kind of stuff hmm. and they feed off of your negative energy well not necessarily a uh, negative but yeah they feed off of your uh, the emotional spectrum within your body huh and your energies, yeah, it's 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 really fascinating. Well, some people theorize that that's what uh, uh, these, you know, the um, shadow people do. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, they do appear in times of turmoil or negativity. Uh, and some people think that what they do is they they feed all. I mean, these are other dimensions. You know, in this theory, these beings are from another dimension. So who's not to say how they survive and what they eat or where they get energy? You know what I mean? And it's like. They found our dimension. They come and scare us, and they, and and some people say that it's kind of like Pennywise from it. You know, they like to get us good and scared, and and then they just to them it's 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 sustenance. So yeah, there um, are there are beings beyond our plane of existence who feed on us in just like a, a intestinal parasite in many different ways. You know, mm, those so, scare me. Intestinal parasites like yeah. pinworms. I thought of something crawling out of your butt when you sleep to yeah. lay eggs in your. The folds of your you gotta anus. Be careful, dude. You got to be more careful. What do you What do you do to kill them? I don't know. They're in your belly. I don't know. I guess I don't know. Drink I didn't even know that butt vodka. worms. I don't know. I didn't even know butt worms were a thing until you know somebody had made a joke about butt worms, and I'm like talking about like dog butt worms, and they were like, "No, people butt worms," and I'm like, yeah. "People get butt worms," and I looked. They were like, "Yeah, look it up," and it was it's like pin worms or something, man. It it. Oh, yeah. I wish but I'd have never of those read it. Will, uh, enter through the bottom of your feet, like if you you're barefoot walking outside. I, I don't know if they're hookworms or pinworms or what, but tapeworms. I mean, not man. tapeworms. You got like ringworms. I know. Can yeah, do something there's all similar. kinds of uh, parasites that can get inside you. I ain't got none in me. But do you think that uh, you know? I mean, wh- wh- I just I don't know. I mean, I say vampire. What do you think? I mean, do you think they feed off of energy? Do you think they physically want to eat someone? I mean, clearly. 
I haven't, you know, there probably aren't too many encounters of someone being found devoured in their home. So it's almost as if you just disappear and you think maybe they take you away and store you away and they eat you later. Most likely, yeah. Like I said, I do want to cross-reference a lot of different encounters to see exactly, you know, what were uh, the similarities and the people, you know, who were making these claims. I mean, I can tell you right now, ain't no need because we say that and we'll never come back to it. So there's no, no need we'll to cross. No, we won't. You say a million times, we'll revisit. We did a Skinwalker thing, but we don't. We don't ever come yeah. back to. So the thing is, we have to go with what we've got now. And I can tell you, a lot of a lot of encounters. You know, are uh, are very similar. That's kind of what has me skeptical is the fact that they're, you know, a little too similar at times. Sometimes, yeah. And, I mean, I know similarities are kind of what you look for for consistency of story. But, I mean, some of the similarities just as far as the little one being nervous and the older one being confident. And sometimes you're like, that don't sound like that would be the case every time. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know. So, I don't know. Yeah, I it. Either urban legend or yeah, it could be some kind of creature that's that's looking to prey on the uh, on the unsuspecting. Which is sad because whoever it is or whatever it is, they're preying on people's kindness. Yeah, because they come to your door asking you for a favor, and you see a child. I mean, it really is whatever that being is. If there if there is malicious intent there, what a piece of shit that being is. I've always said some of the lowest scum on earth are people who. Take advantage of someone's kindness, be it someone who pretends to be broke down and murders you or robs you or someone that, you know, pretends to be in distress or danger and then robs you or kills you. Or like this, they make you think that they're a child in danger and then they kill you. You know, what a piece of shit. Yeah, no kidding, man. Um, There is one really cool video that could, I mean, you'll find tons of videos of these on YouTube, so feel free to search. Um, One thing I did, a lot of them could easily be faked, but there is one that creeped me the hell out and it could easily be fake and in fact it probably is fake but i'm not gonna lie it creeped me out so it's this guy that claims he figured out a frequency in which to call these black-eyed children and he plays the sound throughout the night and sets up a camera out his backyard he lives kind of remotely in the woods from what i think i've seen you know Mm -hmm. um and the first couple of nights nothing happens but then one night he sees this girl like come to the edge of his woods or to his porch and just stand there and and stand for hours before going back to the woods. Oh my God. And uh, it is it is a pretty creepy. And I mean, like I said, easily faked, easily whatever. But man, it freaked me out. And I'll tell you what, we can get your reaction to it. Come around the corner right here, and I'll show you that video. Uh, call on tape. See if I can find it. And I'll give you guys the exact name for it. So if you want to uh, look this up for yourself, you can. If I can find it. I might not even be able to find it again. Uh, It's been a very long time since I've seen this video. But I remember it freaked me out. Um, But uh, actually, JP, I'll tell you what. You just go sit back down. Possibly it's been pulled from the internet. Maybe. Um. I, that's weird because when I used to search black eyed kids caught on camera, it was one of the first things that would pop up. Now yeah. it's gone. Well, it, it, I don't know. So while I think it's creepy, I definitely don't think there's much merit to it, or I think that people just freaked out. So at the end of the day, you don't believe in the black eyed children? Not really, no. I think that, uh, I'm not saying some of these people don't have encounters, mm-hmm. um, but I also know that, uh, you know, I, it just, I don't, it just, it seems like an easy, and you can find videos where people have been fly, flying drones through the woods and there's a kid, but the thing is a lot of times black eyed kids caught on camera don't actually have black eyes. Mm-hmm. You don't see that close to them. They're just a child. Like you'll see a, a drone video catches a black eyed child standing in the middle of the woods and a like, black eyed child caught on camera. Okay. You caught a creepy ass kid in the middle of the woods by themselves, which is definitely creepy and warrants question, but at what point do you just assume? I mean, how do we know they're not like ghosts? How do we know they're not like a zombie or, you know, any other no- number of paranormal states a person can be in? Yeah, dude, it's uh, this is wild. It, it could be, you know, it could be a, a, a paranormal creature. I hate that I can't find that original video because, man, it is creepy. And I mean, there's nothing to it. Like, there is absolutely nothing to it, but it creeped me out. Well, like I said, there are things not of this uh, 
earth that do prey on us. So this could be one of those things. Well, I, even though I say I don't really believe in the paranormal, I mean, I do believe that there is more to life and existence in this 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 world than we can comprehend. Yeah. I just think a lot of reportings and things are people like my sister. I love her, but my sister is one of those people where every time something pops or groans or moves, it's a ghost. You know it's what I mean? And it's, or something. and it's like, you know, you hear pop. Did you hear that? It's a ghost. And you're like, no, that's wood. It's like 22 degrees outside. And it was really warm earlier when wood gets cold and hot and contracts and swells and shrinks and pops. And it's just how it works. You know, the phone will ring and somebody will hang up, ghost. And you're like, no, it's it's probably a telemarketer. But, probably. you know, I think a lot of times that's the case. But I do think some people probably have some. I mean, I, there are child murderers out there. Yeah, there are. I mean, those two girls that took the other girl out and stabbed her. Mm. Luckily, she didn't die, but they stabbed the shit out that little girl yeah. because they said Slender Man told them to. Damn. And these are little kids, I think, like around 12. So, I mean, you've got these, you know, you've got evil kids. So, I'm not saying people haven't had encounters with some evil kids who want to get in their house and do something. But I don't necessarily know that they are all black-eyed children. I find it fascinating, though. I used to do a lot of reading. It's For a while, I got really into creepypastas and, like, real-life scary things. But this is back in, like, 2013 and 14. So, a lot of my little bit of knowledge that I had is pretty much gone. I think the fact that you're publicly dispelling them uh, they're probably going to draw them to you. You better shut your mouth because while I don't believe in them, I'm going to tell you what. No. Yeah. <laughs> if, I'm going to tell you what. If it's the middle of the night and I see a little kid at my door, I'm just not going. You be call like, the police. Yeah. There's a little creepy ass kid, on, which is funny because I have, you know, being a homeowner and I live in, I live in a neighborhood. Luckily, it's not like a cram packed right. neighborhood, but I have houses around me. And, I mean, I have had instances where I don't think, like I had one kid that kept parking. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's a public street, yes, but he kept parking right in front of my house. And he would sit there for like 20, 30 minutes. And we were all outside having a drink. Finally, I just got up and walked out there and was like, I was, I'm pretty sure he's buying some weed, whatever. Right. You can't fault him. Hey, you do whatever. Just don't, don't bring that shit in front of my house. You know what I'm saying? Like bring you in your little pot, but you know, you do that somewhere else. And I mean, I just walked out there. I was like, I know what you're doing. You know, you need to go do it somewhere else. Oh, no, I just was using. And, okay, well, go do it up the street. There's plenty of places you can park, not in front of a house. Right. And I have a you know kid inside. You need to go. Yeah. Um, me being an old man. But, I mean, he could have been a black eyed child. <laughs> I could have walked over there and this dude could have just been like, thank you. <laughs> and then ate me. Yeah. I do, though. It is weird. That's one thing I haven't gotten used to. All my life, I've pretty much lived like, well, I have lived in neighborhoods. But a lot of times in my life, I've lived out in the country. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when someone knocks on your door late at night, it ain't, it's nothing, yeah, it's nothing that you take lightly. I'm not saying you have to go full commando and open the door and point a gun at them, but you're definitely cautious because you're out in the middle of nowhere. People don't typically, you know, someone went out of their way to get to your home. Um, but, uh, so I do have people knock on my door all the time at the neighbor in the neighborhood. And that's something that kind of, I haven't gotten used to. Yeah. It makes you nervous. Yeah. Cause I had one time the door and the door got knocked on a couple of week, uh, a week or two ago. And it was, you know, I'm like, who the hell is knocking at the, you know, nine o'clock at night. And I go to the door and it's actually the sweet old lady across the street. And her niece had fallen and needed some help getting up or something like that. But I mean, it's like, you can tell her to go away. <laughs> I don't care about your niece. No, no, I didn't. I, I, you know, we went and helped her, but still it was, you know, I don't like it. But yeah, I, if I have a child come to my door now, I want to publicly state that JP does not believe in the black-eyed children either. So if you want to put that stink on me, no, you no, you don't believe it either. No. So you know, if you're going to come to my house, just make sure you go to JP's house as well. I do respect the otherworldly forces. No, in my neighborhood, man, I know not to go to the door. <laughs> you ain't got to worry about that. Somebody knocks at your door unless they yell police. Yeah, you don't get up. Yeah, cut off the lights. Be quiet. Right. Oh, but what do you think, listener? Black-eyed children, are they real? Are they fake? Do you have an experience? If we got a, we don't have a listener base big enough for this yet, but I would love to have a listener base big enough that we could say, like, send us your encounters. We would love to read them. And that's something I would like to get into is to have listeners, black-eyed children experiences, ghost experiences, whatever. I'll tell you what, if you are a listener with a paranormal experience, and you have it written up or you don't mind writing it up, send it to us. I would love to do like a listener uh, collection of, of paranormal encounters. Oh, as would I. 
So, you know, if you do have one, let us know. And also let us know your thoughts on the Black Eyed Children. I think so far, I don't know. Like, I hate to, I try to be open-minded. And, I, you know, but I, so I try to say, you know, I don't know what's out there. Right. But I also feel like, I don't know. Like you said, the guy has a forum and he talks about know. these things. It's It's just not as, you know. It just sounds like a good way to spice it up and get yourself some attention. And then other people are like, oh, yeah, I uh, I had an experience. So, yeah. But let us know. I mean, maybe you've got an experience out there that can change our minds. And you say, no, you're crazy. I know it's real because here's what, here's what happened to me. We would love to hear that. Hopefully but otherwise, uh, don't forget, if you are a fan of Weird Wednesday, next Wednesday, I'm not 100% sure that there will be anything up because, well, it's Christmas, mm-hmm. yeah, we'll um, but we it. but we might maybe we'll talk about Krampus or something like oh, yeah. that. You know, like, maybe maybe we'll do yeah. a Christmas themed Weird Wednesday. But there's no promises. But if there is not one next Wednesday, then of course the following Wednesday, well, that's New Year's Day, isn't it? Yeah, maybe. there probably won't be one. To, I tell you what, we might still be able to work something out. But keep a watch on the channel if you've enjoyed the discussion. Uh, consider subscribing, uh, whether you're listening on SoundCloud, iTunes. Uh, YouTube, wherever if you're listening on YouTube, don't forget to hit the bell notification if you subscribe so you get notified of our videos. Likes help us out a ton. And again, don't forget to check out our Patreon for extra podcasts, Please. extra content, and secret contests. So I guess we will see you on Friday for Mail Call. Patrons, we'll see you tomorrow yeah. on the Patreon exclusive podcast. I'm Justin. I'm JP. And we're the Podcasting Dead. <laughs>